Good evening, welcome to Patrick Henry Community College. I'm Greg Hodges, Vice President for Academics, Student Success Services. We are so honored to have you with us tonight. We didn't want anybody to get sleepy, so we turned the thermostat way down. Thank you for coming out this evening. I want to take just a moment and extend a heartfelt congratulations on behalf of the administration at Patrick Henry to these LPN students that you see before you this evening. I don't need to tell anybody in the audience that the nursing curriculum at Patrick Henry is one of, if not the most rigorous curriculums we have on our campus. And uh, the fact that these students have made it this far speaks of the work, the integrity, and the hard, hard, hard effort that they've put into it. So uh, I know there'll be lots of applause tonight, but would you join me in congratulating this class sitting on this stage this evening? Then I also want to congratulate the folks sitting in the audience tonight because a curriculum of this effort does not happen without sacrifices, without moms and dads, without the sacrifices of a lot of uh, uh, stakeholders to bring this to fruition. So we're honored you're here tonight. This will be a touching ceremony. I've never sat through one of the pinning ceremonies without feeling moved by the work of this faculty, the staff, but most of all the students. So again, welcome to what we think is the most beautiful campus in Virginia, and we're glad to have you tonight. Amy? And again, I welcome you here to Patrick Henry Community College. I'm Amy Webster. I'm the Director of Nursing and Allied Health. And it's my honor to congratulate these graduates sitting up here on stage. Um, I've been a nurse for over 20 years, but I started my path as a practical nurse. So I certainly know how hard it was to make that transition into school. Um, and these ladies have done it in a faster pace than I did. My program was 18 months, and they've done theirs in 12. So when they started last January, they never knew December would get here so fast. Um, we really hate that the snowstorm impacted our um, ceremony last Thursday night, but we're just thrilled that we could have it tonight because you definitely need to be honored. Um, your hard work is just unbelievable. Um, and even though you all support and saw how tears and sweat and stress and lots of things like that at home, um, we know what you've lived. Um, and we're so very proud of you. Um, I'd like to acknowledge your um, faculty members because you wouldn't be here today without them, and that's for certain. Um, I'd like Ms. Wagner and Ms. Nelson to please stand. <laughs> These ladies, um, they, they start with the students and they send them out. Um, we have a little help in the middle in the summer with some adjuncts, but Ms. Ms. Wagner and Mrs. Nelson, they, they are with you guys all through it. And talk about dedicated, organized, and on top of it, that's what those two ladies are. So I'm very grateful for the hard work that both of you do. Um, I always like to give a word of wisdom, um, and, and I shared words of wisdom in the RN pinning ceremony last week, and so um, I'd have to say, um, I kind of share the same sentiment, and that is, as you leave here to practice as a nurse, after taking boards, of course, I want you to practice with integrity. Um, never go into a situation where the patient is not your first consideration. You advocate for your patients, and you do everything for them. You are their voice, and you're also a family and support system voice when it's needed. So I hope that as you leave here, and you know how hard you've worked to gain the knowledge you need to take your licensure exam and to become licensed as a nurse, that when you look back at what you've done at Patrick Henry, you hear Miss Nelson and you hear Miss Wagner, their little voices, little angels in your ears guiding your practice because I know they've instilled many words of wisdom. Thank you and congratulations. <laughs> One of my privileges in ministry is to serve on the small team of chaplains that provides pastoral care at Sova Hospital in Danville. And so with tremendous audacity, I presume to, to thank you on behalf of the, the sick and suffering throughout Southside Virginia 
for uh, offering yourselves in such selfless service to them and those who are to come in the future. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we remember tonight that it is you who are the divine physician. We look to the sacred scriptures and we see so often that when there is somebody who is sick, who is lame, who is in need of healing, that they call out to you, that they approach you. And with just a word or a touch or a gesture, you extend your healing power to them. To remember that you are the God of miraculous healing. And remember as well that you choose us, you empower us to be your hands and your feet in bringing this about in our own place and time. And so we implore you, Lord, tonight that you would watch over, bless, and equip these, your beloved daughters, with absolutely everything they need to convey your healing power to those in our community who will be depending on them in the future. Give them especially your wisdom and compassion so you can very much uh, equip them to, to be alongside those who are sick and suffering so that they walk in the shoes of those most in need and assist all of those who are currently ill or will be ill in the months and the years ahead of us to know your grace and your goodness at a very difficult point on your journey. We ask that you would bless uh, our evening. Uh, may all of our words and our gestures ultimately glorify you and equip us, Lord, as we move into the future to never be far from your saving love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Good evening, family, friends, faculty, and honorary guests. My name is Brittany Gill, and I'm the president of this practical nursing class of 2018. First and foremost, I want to thank God, for if it wasn't for him, we would not have made it to this night. I would also like to personally thank each and every one of you for attending our pinning ceremony, and an even bigger thank you for supporting your future nurses in this long journey that we have endured. Together, we have cried, we have laughed, but more importantly, we have succeeded. Together we have prayed before each exam. Some we passed with flying colors and some we didn't, but we have always had our faith. First, we learned, we learned in fundamentals the basics of nursing that, all, that weren't always very basic. Then, <laughs> then we learned in pediatrics how not to scare away our smallest patient, and in OB we witnessed the beginning of life. No matter how hard it got, we always had our faith. Then we made it to the medical surgical semester and some of us witnessed the end of life, but we always had faith. Looking back at where we started and where we are now, it is very clear that time flies by. I feel so honored to speak on behalf of this amazing class. Yes, we have bumped heads, but nonetheless, we have supported each other. Whether it was during three hour long lectures, bringing full course meals to class, or by pushing each other through the doors for clinicals at 6.45 in the morning, or by calming our fears before HESI exams at the end of each semester. We pushed through any and every obstacle that nursing school brought, but we have always had faith. Where would we be without our amazing nursing instructors, Ms. Nelson and Ms. Wagner? You are the nurses that we aspire to be. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for believing in us, and thank you for molding us into the nurses we've become. I want to thank each of the ladies on the stage behind me, for each one taught me something different. Thank you for all, thank you all for being motivators, teachers, and teammates, for being what nursing is all about, a team. From the very first day of class to now, we have gained knowledge, friends, and some incredible memories. So ladies, as this is likely our last time in the same place at the same time, I ask you to always Keep your faith. When, excuse me. When the wonderful world of nursing hits the hardest, remember why you chose nursing. Because of our love for caring for people, it's some we don't even know, even at their weakest moments. We have been told this whole year, if you didn't chart it, then you didn't do it. Since we have now completed all of our charting and all of our documentation, we can now say we did it. <laughs> Thank you. 
At this time, I would like to introduce our guest speaker and a wonderful nurse, Tanya Covington. Tanya is an RN in the emergency department at Sova Martinsville, where she has been employed for six and a half years. She is a 1999 graduate of, <clears throat> excuse me, a 1999 graduate of Southside Virginia Community College in a, as a licensed practical nurse and a 2005 graduate of J. Sergeant Reynolds Community College as a registered nurse. Tanya is currently enrolled at Liberty University to obtain her bachelor's degree. Tanya is a mother of four children and a granddaughter, and has, and, excuse me, is a grandmother of a gorgeous granddaughter. Please help me welcome Ms. Tanya Covington. Good evening, everyone. First, I would want to thank God for allowing me to come here to participate in y'all's graduation ceremony tonight. Secondly, you know, um, I also want to thank y'all for nominating me to be your speaker. They didn't have to do it, but they did, and I thank you all. And again, I want to say congratulations. Um, to be honest, this is my first time in front of a crowd this large, other than speaking it at church. But with God's help, I'll get through this. Um, I know this journey wasn't easy for you guys. Any journey in life that you are willing to work for, to, is going to be hard. So I commend y'all for staying this struggle and finishing to get your licensed practical nurse. I commend each of you for hanging on and not giving up also during your time as a student and especially as a student working beside nurses, doctors, um, nursing assistants, techs, and all the um, facilitators in our hospital. Me personally, I enjoy working with each and every one of you guys. Honest to God, I learned more from you guys than y'all have from me because I say this because um, I've been out of nursing school for 20 years, and y'all are learning new things that I have not encountered in my nursing career, so I thank y'all for bringing knowledge to me, as well as me giving y'all knowledge as well. And I'm glad that this is a Bible-based college, because um, in the Bible, Luke, the sixth chapter, verse 40, it states, Students are not greater than their teachers, but the student who is fully trained will become like the teacher. How true is this statement? I respond by saying this in the 45 years that I've been living on this earth and the 20 years that I've been nursing, um, good nursing instructors help mold you into becoming who you are today. Um, honestly, you will not obtain every bit of knowledge um, before you take the boards when you're caring for your patients. But when that critical time comes, guess what? That knowledge is going to flood back and you're going to know what you need to do to take care of your patients. And a little bit um, for you guys as you're preparing to take your NCLEX, um, my advice to you guys is to relax. That's the biggest thing is to relax before you take your boards. Um, yes, it, this is the most important test that you'll ever take in your life, unless y'all go back and take your RN boards, because that's just as hard. But again, I say relax and, um, and just calm your spirit. That's what I'm trying to do, calm my spirit, because I'm a little nervous up here. <laughs> um, and another thing, when you're studying for your, your boards, just review for about 30 minutes each day. Don't think that you're gonna learn everything um, right before you take your boards, because if you didn't learn it while you were in nursing school, you're not gonna learn it in the time that it's gonna take you to take your boards, okay? Another thing is to rest. Eat a well-balanced meal. Excuse me. And on the day of your exam, pray. 
Prayer changes things. So if you're nervous like I am, if you pray, God will calm your spirit and you'll be able to pick your answer and do what you need to do. Lastly, as you're taking your boards, and this is what I had to learn because I wasn't a very good test taker in nursing school, and my instructor sent me to a um, test taking class. And during this time, the instructor was like, you shouldn't spend no more than 60 seconds with your question. You should read the question once, read the question and then the answer, then read the question and then pick your answer. Because usually when you do that, your first instinct is the correct answer <coughs> most of the time. I'll say most of the time because sometimes you might get one or two answers that you're kind of tossed up, but go with your gut. Um, upon you passing your nursing boards, because I know each and every one of you will, um, take the opportunity to learn from your mentors and your nurse preceptors. Get all the knowledge that you can and incorporate their style into yours. But in any case, if you're not grasping what your preceptor is teaching, speak up, go to your nurse manager and let them know that, you know, it's not working out with the preceptor that you have because there's always another preceptor that um, works well with you. So don't be afraid to speak up. And, <clears throat> and I just got to say this, that in the 20 years that I've been nursing, as the, other, um, the nursing, uh, excuse me, right there. Oh gosh. <laughs> Let me look at my paper here. The director of nursing, Mrs. Amy Webster, as she stated she was an LPN before she went back to get her RN. I too started off as an LPN. And I'll say this. I had my best learning experience as a licensed practical nurse. Honest to God. Learn all you can as you become an LPN. And if you do desire to go back and get your registered nurse or your bachelor's or even your master's or your doctorate, just rely on everything that you learned as an LPN and just build on it as you continue on in your um, knowledge for nursing. Um, there were several people that actually helped me during my nursing career, and one of those nursing um, nurses was Lily Adams. I don't know if she's alive, but if she isn't, God has her. But she taught me a lot as an LPN, a brand new nurse. And my first nursing career um, job was at Danville Regional Medical Center, which is now Soba Danville. And then after I um, graduated from registered nurse, at J. Sergeant Reynolds, I worked at the Medical College of Virginia on the acute med surge unit, and my preceptor was Christy Jones, who was the RMBSN, and she taught me a lot of things, and I thank them both. Um, and, you know, a lot of my knowledge came from great preceptors and great nursing instructors. Um, and look, the 11th chapter, the 33rd verse, no one lights a lamp and then hides it on or puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp in, in place on a stand where, it light, where its light can be seen by all who enters the, the house. I say this to you guys, let your light shine. You all have a light, let it grow, let it glow. Okay. And one of the biggest things is treat your patients with kindness, empathy, understanding, and love. Not only treat your patients this way, but treat yourselves with kindness, empathy, and love. As well as your fellow coworkers and doctors and your friends and family. And yes, even those not so kind doctors that you run into, because if y'all have been with me in the emergency room, we have a few that kind of don't listen, but you have to be assertive and make your point come across to them, because like um, that, your, um, like the director has stated already, uh, you are your patient, you are the patient's advocate. 
um, some nursing advice I can give to you as you begin your new career. The first one is get to know your healthcare employees and your team. Whether you're working on a med search unit, working in the ER, or wherever you choose to work, get to know your fellow coworkers. They'll learn your strengths and weaknesses as well as they will know, you will know their strengths and weaknesses. Number two, don't beat yourself up if you make a mistake. So if you make a medication error, own up to it. Because the biggest thing is if you keep it and you don't tell the physician that you gave your patient the wrong medication and you don't tell the physician that you made a med error, that loses a um, respect and trust issue. Nursing is about trust because people come to the hospital, they'll trust the nurse before they trust someone else. So remember that. Um, number three, become efficient at charting and documenting. I know your class president said that. If you didn't document it, you didn't do it. So make sure you do your documentation and do it well. Another thing, develop a routine. Um, I say this when I was a floor nurse, when I would um, go to assess my patient, I would always assess the critically ill patient before I would assess the patient that's a walkie-talkie. And y'all know what the walkie-talkies are. But for you guys that don't know what a walkie-talkie is, it's a patient that is self-care. They can take care of themselves when someone who's not able to care for themselves, the nurses um, will take care of those first. And I carry that on as an ER nurse as well. And then number five is set your cell phones. I know all of y'all have cell phones. Set your cell phones for the 24-hour military time because your medications after 12 noon it's 1,300 all the way to 2,400. So if you don't know that 2,100 is 9 p.m., you might give that man at 3 o'clock. So make sure you learn your military time. And the number six, debriefing after situations that you can't handle. As an ER nurse, I've seen a lot, and some of the hardest things that I've seen is pediatric patients that pass away. That's one of the hardest. In the, as a nurse of 20 years, almost 20 years, that was really hard for me when a physician had to take care of two pediatric codes at the same time. And then having to tell the parents that one of your child is not gonna make it. So that's your opportunity to debrief with the chaplain, with your charge nurse, with the director, just to get it off your chest. Don't take it home. You can cry about it, because Lord knows I did. It's okay to cry, but you gotta remember, you gotta be strong for the other patients that you gotta care for, okay? And then also, remember there's no I in team. We must learn to work together to accomplish everything that we must do. Granted, nursing is a 24 hour career, and I say career because it's not a job, because I love what I do, and even if I didn't get paid to do it, guess what, I would still do it. And I'm quite sure these ladies will feel the same way if you ask them in two years from now. Right, ladies? All right. <laughs> Number eight, take care of yourself, okay? That's most important. If you can't take care of yourself, how can we entrust you to take care of someone that's sick? So if you're tired, take a moment, get yourself together. Take these me breaks. Like I said, if you had a bad code or a situation that you need to remove yourself so you can take care of the next patient, do that. A lot of my coworkers take a nebulizer break. If y'all don't know what the nebulizer break is, um, come to the ER, we have a lot of smokers that like to go out and smoke a cigarette, but um, we don't charge them, we'll charge it to their heads and not to their hearts. <laughs> um, one of the biggest thing is don't belittle your subordinates. And when I say subordinates, those are the people that work underneath you. CNAs, ED techs, your housekeepers, and any of those other, I'll say non-critical jobs. But their job is just as important as LPN's job or RN's job, because I can't do my job if they're not willing to do theirs. So never belittle those that work under you. As I say, I'm as good as the people that work underneath me. So if I can't work well with my LPN, or my ED tech or my CNA, then I'm not doing the job that God put me in here to do. And lastly, be thankful. 
be thankful that you are a nurse because y'all worked really hard to get to this point today. Ask questions. If you don't know something, ask that question. Because the only question that is the wrong question is the question that's never asked. So remember that if you don't ask, if you don't know, then you're liable to make a mistake. Uh, clarify any concerns that you may have. So if you are working the night shift and there's an order that you need to carry out but you're not sure, it's okay if you wake that doctor up at two o'clock in the morning to clarify an order. Do that. It's better to be safe than sorry because you worked really hard to get these licenses and once you're licensed, you know, no one can take it away from you but the Board of Nurses, okay? So remember that. Um, also, avoid workplace gossip. Everybody likes to gossip. Please, avoid it. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> um, and a lot of y'all know, I like to quiz when I um, give meds. Y'all know that. If you don't know, and I say this because if I don't know the med, or even if I do, and y'all ask me a question, well, how is that supposed to be given? I'm like, let's look it up. Like I said, I've been out of nursing school for 20 years. I'm still looking up meds, whether I've given it two days ago <coughs> or 15 years ago. I'm still going to look up meds that are not known to me at the present time. And also, be flexible. Be flexible with your time. Be flexible with your coworkers. Be flexible with everything that you do. Nursing is a job of art. And remember, always remember your five rights. It might be a sixth one, is it? Yeah? Okay, so the five rights. The right meds? Come on, y'all tell me. Right patient? Right time? Right route? and the right desk, correct. And always remember, good hand washing, okay? And also, I want to say, a great nurse should always be prepared. And when I say be prepared, you need to have on comfortable shoes, a comfortable uniform, because you never know when you're needing to run off to handle a situation, okay? And um, a nurse should also have a working stethoscope. You don't want a broke down stethoscope with a hole or falling apart. Scissors, <coughs> Kelly clamps, and a good writing pen. And most importantly, your badge. Because if you don't badge in and out, you don't get paid. So remember that. <laughs> Carry that badge. Um, and lastly, there's some nursing hacks and tricks I want to tell you about. Um, Y'all do know hydrogen peroxide removes blood in your uniforms because there's going to be days you get blood on your uniform. Hydrogen peroxide should be your best friend. Um, triple gloving when you have to handle cold brams. If y'all don't know what the cold brams are, ask your nurses up here. Uh, I learned this one today and I did not know this. If you have a bedridden patient that their hair is matted, use alcohol. But one of the things y'all need to make sure you check is what? Allergies. So if they have an allergy to alcohol, you can't use alcohol, okay? Um, so since we're talking about some of the not so pleasant stuff, you know, if, you got, if your patient has stool stuck to their behind, if you didn't know, mouthwash, not mouthwash, excuse me, shaving cream and lotion will remove it on a wet wipe, okay? Remember that one. Um, since I said something about mouthwash, Sometimes you get those nights of fresh patients that come in. If you use mouthwash in the um, basin when you're washing them, it kills odor, mouthwash. And then for those excessive virulent smells, when you're in the ER, we have a lot of virulent smells. Coffee grounds. But I do encourage you not to use the coffee grounds to make that doctor a pot of coffee, okay? Don't do that, right? And then lastly, um, use an examination glove over your stethoscope when you have to go in the isolation room, along with the isolation gowns to keep them from falling off. If you stick a hole in the arm and then down on your glove, your gown won't come off. Who knew? Um, and then I know y'all said something about pediatric patients when you're starting IVs or drawing blood work. If you cut those tourniquets in half and then cut them in half again, it doesn't hurt so much when you have to stick your child. 
and some other things you can invest in, vapor rub, toothpaste. And I know y'all have seen me pull out some vapor rub when I have to go into a patient's room that isn't so fresh, but that works magic as well. So in closing, I would like to thank each and every one of you, and I want to thank everyone out there in the audience for allowing me to come up here as nervous as I was. It actually got easier as I kept reading and talking, so I thank you all, and I thank the class of 2018, and I wish you the best, and I hope to be able to work beside some of y'all in your career. But before I go, I do have a little token of my appreciation because y'all deserve the best. And I know it's your pinning ceremony, and excuse my Victoria's Secret bag. <laughs> There's nothing Victoria's Secret in here, okay? But Excellence Award is given to the member of the graduating class that has demonstrated outstanding academic performance. This award takes into consideration the recipient's overall GPA, their classroom and clinical attendance, participation and skills demonstrated, and in particular, their dedication not only to their own academic success, 
but to the success of their classmates as well. This year's recipient is Stacy Murphy. to present tonight um, is the Peer Award. The Peer Award is given to the member of the graduating class that has been chosen by their classmates as exemplifying the nursing profession. This award is about more than the skills one must know to be a nurse. It's about the passion, dedication, unconditional caring that must be demonstrated to the patients when they are most vulnerable. This year's recipient, as chosen by their classmate, is Elizabeth Jennings. Our next award is a scholarship. It's uh, the Jesse Fry Rhodes Nursing Scholarship. The scholarship was newly established last year to honor Jesse Fry Rhodes. It's to be awarded to a nursing student who has a 3.0 GPA or higher, exhibits financial need, and is a resident of the PHCC service area. The donor requests that the funds be applied to the cost of the NCLEX practical nurse testing. And this year's recipient is Brittany Whiteside. <laughs> Thank you for letting me be here tonight. Um, my wife's been telling me I need to take my jacket off, but as, uh, Pastor Greg said it's cold in here and I'm awake, so I think I'll leave it on. Uh, we're just here tonight, you know, I got here a little early and I was downstairs and uh, I was hearing some of the young ladies talking about being nervous. You know, it's nothing to be nervous for y'all tonight. Uh, there's no test here tonight. There's no assignments. It's just uh, y'all celebration and we're here to help celebrate y'all's accomplishments. Uh, family, friends, uh, I'm thankful to be here tonight to congratulate these students on their completion of the classes at this time and we would like to take an opportunity to pray and give God thanks. So if you will, would you please bow your heads and uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we just take this time and to give you thanks. It has been a uh, full year of studying and late nights and worrying and sometimes uh, missing family time and uh, just missing family functions, but God, through your grace, these uh, students, these young ladies made it through it. And God, we're just here tonight to help them celebrate as they receive their pins and uh, just to stand before their family and friends so they can rejoice with them with their accomplishments. Lord, we just ask you to uh, keep your hand upon them, to guide them in the days ahead because, you know, the class was tough, but they are going to have some tough days ahead as they step out into the field that they have chosen. So, God, we just ask you to keep your hand on them. Give them knowledge. Give them strength. Because, God, we know you're the great physician, but these young ladies right here have decided to step in and take a place that they're going to go in and comfort and just uh, be kind and patient with uh, families and that are suffering. So, God, just thank you for these young ladies that have chosen to do that. We just love you tonight and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank everyone that has supported her throughout her journey this year. 
She would like to thank everyone for their encouraging words as she can finally say she made it. Kayla wants to thank her boyfriend and close friends for helping her deal with the stress she dealt with on a daily basis. She also wants to thank her father for cheering her on and making it known how proud he is of her. She's beyond grateful to have her two angels in heaven, heaven watching over her, but at the end of the day, she gives God all the glory for getting her through everything. Asia Renee Davis. Asia wants to sincerely thank her parents, Kurt, Charlene Davis, and Justin Brown. Thank you for helping her with the kids, helping her when she was having car troubles, and would stress about getting to class and clinical. Without your outstanding help, any and everything that she needed, she couldn't have done it without you. You all were the biggest motivators, including her kids, Ethan and Noah. She also wants to thank her family and friends, near and far, for being a listening ear during her times of frustration. You all have helped me so much to get, to get her, have helped her so much to get her through nursing school. She loves you all. Felicia Witcher Fountain. First and foremost, Felicia would like to thank God because he was the pen in which she was able to write her dreams and make them her reality. God has placed wonderful people in her life to help her along this journey. To Ms. Nelson and Ms. Wagner, she cannot thank you all enough for teaching with such enthusiasm and skill. Felicia appreciates you both for instilling godly principles of serving others with dignity and respect. Thank you both for the countless times you were there for this class, going above and beyond the call of duty. Thank you to Mrs. Shelton and Mrs. Wallace for teaching and sharing your personal experiences as nurses. It was your personal experiences that allowed her to connect the dots. To Mr. Gravely, who taught her the skills of being a CNA many years ago and how to give excellent patient care. Felicia still stands by his same principles today of making an impressionable entrance when she walks into a patient's room. He would say, if you look like you just rolled out of bed, then how can you provide good care to a patient? <laughs> to Ms. Amy Webster and Mrs. Conetta Gill, thank you both for allowing her to follow you around in the emergency room over 15 years ago, teaching her about medications, and Mrs. Gill for allowing Felicia to stick her for practice in the wee hours of the night to increase her skills with IVs. You two continue to remind her that she could be a great nurse. To her husband of 24 years, Carrie, she would like to thank you for always supporting and loving her, for being an awesome father to your amazing daughters, Kalisha and Gabrielle, and for teaching her failure as a defining part of success because it will teach you how to get back up and fight. Thank you to her pastor, Bruce Simmons, and church family for kind words and constant prayers. Felicia is beyond grateful for her mother who taught her the value of hard work and strength to persevere through circumstances. To her siblings, Shirley and Jerry, thank you for always believing in her. To her father and mother-in-law, Albert and Karen, thank you for your love and support as well. She especially wants to thank you all for pulling every clinical day with her. Every clinical day and test, you all took over the task of taking Gabby to school for. She will always be grateful. Her oldest daughter, Kalisha, created a quote in 2013 when she wrote, stability doesn't come from chasing an impossible dream. Stability comes from chasing your purpose. Felicia always knew her purpose, but she had to take the time to define it. The defining part of that purpose pushed her outside of the box, caused her to do th things differently in order to make it to this result. Through the defining process, God sent her people who were able to be her stability while she became her purpose. Today she can say she made it to the end of this journey, and she knows she will make all of you proud as a licensed practical nurse. <laughs> she wouldn't have made it this far. She wants to say thank you to everyone who has shown her any amount of love and support and to all of the wonderful ladies she has spent the past year with. Thank you all. 
To Mrs. Nelson and Mrs. Wagner, thank you so much for being such motivating instructors. She loves you both, and she's so glad you both have been a part of her journey. A special thank you goes out to her mom, Katrina, and her grandfather, Leon, Sr., her sisters, Brianna, Sierra, and her best friends, Charity and Brittany, and her amazing boyfriend, Keelan. Her appreciation goes beyond measure, and she thanks all of you for supporting her the whole way. She wants to dedicate her completion of this program and becoming a practical nurse to her late grandmother, Mrs. Gay Gill. Brandy Sophia Hackney. First and foremost, Brandy would like to start off thanking God for guidance throughout her journey. It may have taken her a little longer than others to complete this program, but it was all in due time. Secondly, she would like to thank her family, especially her mother, father, Brantley, Alan, and Cody, for being there every step of the way and your encouragement and support on the days when she wanted to give up. Without her family, she may not have made it through. Lastly, she would like to wish her fellow classmates the best in their own journeys in the nursing world and congratulate them on their career start. She knows without a, a doubt, you guys will all do great things. Kayla Shelton Hambrick. This has been the hardest, most stressful, and yet most rewarding journey Kayla has ever taken. A big thank you to her husband. There were a lot of long nights and crazy schedules, but together they have made it. Kayla wants to thank her boys, Riley and Raylan, for being her motivation and driving force. Kayla wishes her dad was here, but she knows he has been watching over her every step of the way. She would also like to thank her mom, Lewis, Shirley, and Forrest for always helping her. A huge thank you to Stephanie for listening to her the whole year about her nursing school. She wants to thank you all for being patient and supportive. She knows she didn't always make it easy. She could have never done it without all of you. Thank you for believing and loving her every step of the way. Elizabeth Ingram Jenny. Beth would like to thank her wonderful son and husband for all of their love and support. She would like to thank her parents and grandparents for raising her in a Christian home and teaching her compassion and a desire to serve others. Thank you to all her teachers that contributed to her education and especially her anatomy tutor, Dana, who taught her so much about the amazing human body and didn't let her give up. A big thank you to her classmates. She loves you all and she's made many special friends. It's been a pleasure sharing this wonderful journey with you all. She would like to thank her two amazing teachers, Mrs. Nelson and Mrs. Wagner, who every single day were her role models. You both are such an inspiration to the kind of nurse she hopes to be. Your kind words, encouragement, and wisdom has meant so much to her. <laughs> Tina Rose Carver. Tina would like to thank her friends and family for encouraging her and supporting her along the way. She would also like to thank her wonderful instructors for all their hard work and guidance. This wouldn't be a quote from her if she didn't thank her cats for keeping her textbooks warm and reminding her to take study breaks as well. Monica Manzano Molina. First, Monica would like to thank God for helping her get through this journey and giving her strength on the days she wanted to give up. Thank you to her husband and parents for all the love and support they've given her throughout her journey in nursing school. She couldn't have done it without you. She would also like to thank Mrs. Wagner and Mrs. Nelson for being such amazing teachers and clinical instructors. And finally, she wants to thank her son for giving her the motivation to get through school in order to give him a better life. Stacy 
Karai Murphy. <laughs> Stacy would like to thank God first and foremost. Without him, none of this would even be possible. Next, she would like to thank the love of her life, her backbone, Lionel. Thank you so much for carrying on the load. A huge thank you to her two boys, Jaquiel and Jalen. You two have been her biggest motivation. To her family, you all have played a huge part in her success. This is one of her greatest accomplishments, and she couldn't have made it without the love and support from each of you. There are too many of you guys to name, but just know that the many talks, lectures, and words of wisdom has paid off. Stacy appreciates each and every one of you very much. To her sister, brother, niece, nephews, kids, because of you guys, she kept pushing and never gave up on setting a good example. To her brother in heaven, this one is for you. Thank you for being her angel. To her friends, Shavonna Harrison, Jessica Eccles, and Shamira Clark, thank you guys for many talks, encouragement, love, and support. To our awesome nursing instructors, thank you for your time, patience, and lectures. PN class of 2018, thanks for the many prayers we've prayed together. Look, we made it. Being a nurse started as a dream, but she's standing here today and it's becoming a reality. Thank you again, everyone. Tiffany Newman. To Mrs. Wagner and Mrs. Nelson, you both have shown her what it takes to be a great nurse. Thank you for your wisdom and guidance this past year. Tiffany is truly lucky to have had you as her instructors. To her friends, new and old, that have helped her get through the emotional and trying times, she can't thank you enough. Thank you all for your acts of kindness and encouragement. To her fellow rescue squad and fire department members, thank you for all your support and thank you all for providing her with the opportunity to continue to learn and grow in the medical field. To her family, you all have supported her and given her the means to make it through this journey to become a nurse. She cannot thank you enough for helping her to get to this point. To Travis, thank you for always encouraging her to do more. Thank you for putting up with all the mood swings, long nights, and hectic schedules. You have been her calm in the storm, and without you, she would not have made it to this point. Nativia O'Neill. <laughs> Nativia would like to start off by thanking the Lord himself for giving her the strength to make it all the way to the end of this journey. She would like to give a big thanks to her motivation, her daughter. Marley, for always keeping her on track, she would get distracted when it came to homework and for giving her the reason to keep pushing through. Thank you everyone who has helped out with Marley throughout the program and to the ones who supported her all the way through. Thank you. Nativia would like to give a huge thank you to strong ladies who went through this program with her and for giving her another family to love. You guys are amazing. She cannot forget the two wonderful angels who helped her and never gave up on her this whole time, her instructors. Thank you guys for everything and for being such wonderful teachers and role models as nurses. Phyllis Rogers. First and foremost, Phyllis wants to thank God for without him, she never would have made it. Whenever she felt like giving up or just couldn't go on, God was there holding her hand and telling her, everything's going to be okay. Don't give up. I've got you. She would like to thank her family for putting up with her not-so-nice attitude sometimes. She appreciates everything. She especially would like to thank her little brother, who has been there for her when she needed him over the past year. You've become her big brother. Thank you so much, and she appreciates you more than you will ever know. Thank you to everyone who encouraged and believed in her. She made it. Joanna Rose Smart. Oh. 
Joanna has been blessed. There are no words with enough meaning to express how she feels. The support she has been given by those who have become her family has been incredible. Stacy, you are her sister forever. Dearest Dave, you are the best, and her love, Michael, you are the very special to her. It is difficult to find people who sincerely care. To all of her family that are here tonight, especially my angel boy, Bryant, she loves you and thanks you for sharing this moment with her. This has been an emotional year. It has been a turning point for the future and those around her. Those who have made her feel like she can have and do anything. Without the wisdom of her teachers and the encouragement and support from the people closest to her, she would not be here on this night. For that, she is grateful beyond words. Christy Lynn Treadway. Christy would like to first thank God for providing the way and giving her the strength to make it through this year. She would like to thank her husband, Junior, for his prayers, love, support, and encouragement, and for believing in her when she didn't believe in herself. To her amazing children for the motivation to keep going, Amber for helping her study and keeping her on task, Courtney for cheering her on and taking on the responsibility of mini mama, and to both girls for all you did to make sure your little brothers and sister were taken care of. The abundance and extra chores that got take taken care of because of you. Tyler and Sadie, for all of the hugs and kisses that you met her at the door with to take away all the stress from the day she may have had. She would also like to thank her mom and dad, Sandra and Richard, for always encouraging her to go toward her goals in life, for their love, support, and for raising her to be the person she is today. She wants to thank all of her family and friends that have prayed for her, inspired her, and encouraged her through this journey. Lastly, certainly not least, she would like to thank her instructors for being absolutely amazing, pushing her forward even when it felt impossible, and always just being a call or email away. Christy can only hope and pray she's half the nurse you guys are. April Renee Byers. April wants to thank her family and friends for all of the love and support you have shown throughout her nursing journey this year, the calls, the texts, and kind words. A special thank you to her mom and dad for pushing her to do better and to be a better person for herself now and in the future. She wants to thank her brother and sister for all the support you have shown her throughout this stressful year. Lastly, and most importantly, April wants to thank God for always having his hands on her and for showing her that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. She loves you all. Lucretia Nicole Wade. Lucretia would first like to give thanks to God for his grace and mercy along with her guardian angel, Granny Ruth. A special thank you to Damien, the love of her life, for his patience, dedication, and love shown during this most challenging time in her life. Words can't express her gratitude. Also, to her family and friends, she thanks you all from the bottom of her heart for pushing and encouraging her to get to the finish line. Humbly and gratefully, Lucretia has made it happen. Brittany Nicole Whiteside. First and foremost, Brittany would like to thank God for giving her strength and guidance throughout this journey. Next, she would like to thank her wonderful and amazing boyfriend, Corey Little. Thank you for never giving up on her and pushing her to strive to do better. Thank you for being a listening ear and a shoulder to cry on. Thank you for taking on the load and never once complaining. Brittany wants to thank her son, Jeremiah Little, for being very patient with her and being her biggest motivation. She wants to thank her sister, Tiffany Whiteside, and her parents, Otis Whiteside III, Tuesday and Christopher Harrison, 
and Sandra and Jay Little. You all have played a huge part in her success, and she couldn't have made it without the love and support from each one of you. Brittany wants to thank her best friends, Shakita Brodnax and Brittany Gill, for always believing in her and always wanting the best for her. Last and certainly not least, Brittany wants to thank her instructors, Mrs. Nelson and Mrs. Swagner, for never giving up on her as well as being wonderful instructors. She loves you all. portion of the ceremony. Florence Nightingale arrived as Katuri Crimea in 1854, accompanied by 38 nurses. The base hospital was crowded with four miles of beds with 4,000 dying and wounded British soldiers crowded into beds meant for 1,600. There was no water, no soap, no towels, no utensils to eat with, and most of the food was putrid. The death rate was a startling 42.7%. Overcoming these obstacles and obtaining the obvious necessities, Miss Nightingale transformed a place of horror into a haven where patients could truly convalesce. She set up diet kitchens, a laundry, coffee houses that provided music and recreation, reading rooms, and organized classes. In the evening, after the other nurses had retired, she made solitary rounds. She stopped to observe the condition of the sickest patients. These rounds were made with her famous lamp, the great measure of Miss Nightingale's success was the overdrop, overall drop in the mortality rate to just 2.2%, which occurred within six months of her arrival. Two heroic figures emerged from the Crimean War, the soldier and the nurse. In each case, a transformation in public estimation took place, and in each case, the transformation was due to Miss Nightingale. Never again was the British soldier to be ranked as a drunken brute, the scum of the earth. He was now a symbol of courage, loyalty, and endurance. Never again would the picture of a sim <clears throat> excuse me. Never again would the picture of a nurse be a tipsy, promiscuous harridan. Miss Nightingale had stamped the profession of nursing with her own image. In the midst of the muddle and the filth, the agony and the defeat, she had brought about a revolution. Miss Nightingale's lamp has become a symbol of our profession, and we are proud to pass the symbol on to the next generation to enter the ranks of professional nursing. At this time, we'll read the nurse Florence Nightingale Pledge that's printed on the back of your programs. If there's any nurses in the audience that would like to join us, please feel free to do so. I solemnly pledge myself before God and in the presence of this assembly to pass my life in purity and to practice my profession faithfully. I will abstain from whatever is deleterious and mischievous and will not take or knowingly administer any harmful drug. I will do all in my power to maintain and elevate the standard of my profession and will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and all family affairs coming to my knowledge 
in the practice of my calling. With loyalty will I endeavor to aid the physician in his work and devote myself to the welfare of those committed to my care. At this time, we'd like to present the graduating LPN class of December 2018. <laughs> benediction. Can we bow our heads in prayer one more time? Father God, we just come to you tonight, Lord. We thank you as we gathered here with all these ladies. They each one took the opportunity to thank you, God, for just giving them grace and mercy to make it through this program. God, we just ask you to just wrap your loving arms around them. God, they got days before them, and uh, they still got some learning to do, but God, we know you're going to carry them through it. God, we just thank you for the friends and family that have been with them to support them, to bless them, to encourage them, to just stand beside them in the trying times. God, we just ask you that they take some of the attributes that you give to us all, that the most important one is they take love. As they go forth, that they go in a loving spirit to comfort, to encourage God to just stand with uh, someone that's suffering. Lord, we just thank you for uh, these young ladies that have made this decision to go out and just to be a servant because that's what they're doing, Lord, and they're just going to be an example for you. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you again for this opportunity to come together to help these young ladies celebrate their accomplishment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> 